Welcome to the new Cyber Frontier, bringing you the latest news and initiatives that focus on the development of cybersecurity economics. You don't have to be a computer or cybersecurity expert to get plugged in. Your host brings it straightforward, asks the tough questions, and brings the cyber world to a level of understanding for everyone. You can find us on the web at www.newcyberfrontier.com. Now join our host as he introduces the topic for today's New Cyber Frontier. Welcome to today's episode of New Cyber Frontier. On today, we're continuing our IEEE series on uh, blockchain and AI and the security aspects around new and emerging technology in that area. Uh, today, your host, Christopher Gorog, uh, and we have a couple of guests on today, as you can see on the screen if you're watching from video, um, from... Uh, Romania, so quite quite a quite a distance away, and we're glad to have them here. Uh, we have Niku Goga, uh, we have Kristen Tazlici, and Yulia Marin. So uh, Niku is uh, quite a quite a long uh, bio here, and what he's done very impressive. Uh, is a is a professor at the Technical University of Bucharest. Um, IEEE Technology Merit Award winner in 2012, which is a quite an accomplishment, uh, and also a senior researcher at the University of Grogan, um, as well as a chair for the local blockchain in Romania, president, uh, honorary president of HL7 uh, in Romania, and does some, some work on initiatives at University of Berkeley. Berkeley. Um, Chris, Kristen is uh, Kristen Tazlici. PhD, a founder and entrepreneur. He uh, is on that entrepreneurial path of his own company, Soft31, works on some social security projects with the EU. And we're going to talk a little bit about that, a very interesting kind of how those projects integrate and can use AI and possibly blockchain as we move to the future. Also visiting professor at the University of Bucharest. Uh, Yulia Marin uh, is a PhD in computer science, also University of Bucharest. Um, and uh, leader of the EU Eye Bracelet Project, which I had never heard of, but interesting, the the use of smart sensors for uh, geriatric pati patients and some other things. So I hope I got some of those correct. It is a great honor to have all three of you on. Give us each, we'll start with with, with uh, Niku, uh, a little bit about yourself, and then we'll do Jul Julia and Kristen. Um, but give us a little bit about yourself, your background, how you got to the point you're at. Uh, basically, I started my academic career in 98, where I moved to the Eindhoven Technology um, University in Netherlands, where I got my first PhD, where, which was in a software testing. The second year, I got my second PhD from the Technical University of Bucharest, Romania. And after that, from 2004-2006, I was mostly moving in health informatics in different branches computational chemistry, University of Groningen molecular dynamics, which basically is related to the simulation of atoms at the level of cellular cells level. Uh, and I was also involved in medical standardization, medical informatics standardization standards like ISO 11073 for medical devices, where I obtain also together with the rest of the group, the Technology Merits Award, Health Level 7, which is for medical host, um, hospitals. And I contributed to the, to the uh, formation of the Romanian branch for this uh, association, Health Level 7 Romania, and also helping to establish the use of these standards in Romania, for example, together with Christy for the national EHA share made here in Romania. And uh, the rest of our achieve achievements, where uh, got after my return in Romania in 2012, where I got together with uh, other colleagues like Julia, several uh, European pro funded projects grant for research and development. And uh, also we have good connection with United States research group like Berkeley, the standardization org and so on. Yeah, Julia, let's hear a little bit about you. Hello everyone. Uh, I have finished computer science six years ago, my bachelor's studies. Then I did continue 
during it, I did start since my third year of bachelor's. I went to Netherlands and I did an internship there, also molecular dynamics with Professor Goga. Also, I started a master of software engineering for two years. I did my bachelor another three years on three directions of molecular dynamics. Also, the highlight project for the indoor um, location for persons based on their mobile phones, as well as the eye bracelet project, the European project, based on which we have a smart bracelet. According to it, we monitor the blood pressure of pregnant women. And this is a critical situation because it affects the, the infant as well as the mother. And also there can appear several side effects that can last even after giving birth. Great. And during uh, all this time, I also applied uh, for winning some uh, projects and I won a national project also in the, uh, in the domain of ambient assisting the living, as well as another European project for frailty detection great. for age person. Great. Kristen, a little bit about yourself. Hello, my name is Christian Prashlitsky. I'm um, in the IT area since uh, 97, when I started as a software developer. Most of my, uh, most of this year, I spent them in uh, healthcare IT. Uh, I started with development of uh, laboratory information system, electronic medical record, uh, picture archiving and communication system, uh, but also I've been involved in uh, national telemedicine uh, projects, e-prescription, uh, national uh, electronic health records, and also in uh, European projects like uh, European Exchange of Social Security Information, uh, where I was, uh, let's say, working in the central team that developed the project. is the biggest uh, project in uh, uh, exchange of information at uh, the level of European Union in the social security. And uh, since I left European Commission, I started my own company and basically I'm helping the member states to uh, adapt their system to uh, the building block pro uh, building blocks provided by uh, European Commission to integrate among uh, member states. I'm also a visiting professor at uh, Polytechnica University of Bucharest, and I'm working together with uh, uh, Nico um, in uh, uh, Polytechnica University. All right. Well, thank you all. We're going to take a break here from our sponsor. We'll be right back in a minute. BlockFrame technology offers next-generation blockchain-managed trust and security. Unique non-fungible tokens are used to secure software bills of materials to provide data quality and security for every transaction in your supply chain. Deploy advanced peer-to-peer -peer product security, scale zero trust capability to millions of IoT devices, allow vendor tracking and accountability, and rapidly reset from compromise. Unchangeable, time-sequenced blockchain data provides next-generation security using machine learning trust algorithms and audit analytics. Start securing your supply chain today by contacting BlockFrame at www.blockframetech.com. Welcome back to New Cyber Frontier. On today with our three guests, Niku, Christian, and Yulia, uh, talking about uh, the, the security aspects of new technology moving into social programs, a big part of what we heard from their backgrounds uh, in the EU and Romania uh, and across some other pro projects there, and how we can integrate blockchain AI for security privacy and what that brings is kind of what the topic of this series is about. So Niku, Give us some some kind of background on the types of systems you're looking at, and you know possibly the the integration of blockchain. How you see that rolling out? Okay, um, there are different uh, systems that uh, uh, we contributed to in the uh, 
domain of medical area, like I we mentioned, electronic national electronic health record, where basically we, we help with architecture, Christie, and also with a health level seven integration, and also we have several um, um, research projects, research and development, where we we in the area of um, say medical devices. Uh, hospital management systems and uh, medical recommender systems. Now, let me um, uh, dig a little bit what means a medical recommender system. Basically, it means the use of artificial intelligence to make uh, intelligence recommendation to the doctors. For example, a patient is coming and that patient has some diseases and he uh, basically has some symptoms and the, um, um, AI system gives some recommendation to the doctor which kind of analysis the patient can do or whether um, should go for some uh, um, medical treatment and so on. And the doctor can take a better decision based on these recommendations. Of course, the artificial intelligence engine is trained on the existing data. Now um, it comes into the picture of the blockchain. Blockchain basically is um, I think that it can be used for health information systems um, for um, like any distributed system. Basically, it will help to store and in the exchange of information um, between a different hospital, hospital and pharmacy, a hospital, uh, hospital and patient or say medical unit and the rest. However, uh, when we speak about um, security and um, uh, safety of uh, transactions, blockchain is coming with a new paradigm as opposed to the old para oldest paradigms for distributed systems. Basically, while previously um, the safety and security was based on um, uh, hide hiding the information, uh, here in uh, blockchain, basically, um, the security and safety is based on the opening of the information, not hiding it. In the idea, in the idea that if a thiefing occurs, a thief cannot modify all the copies of all the transactions from a blockchain. Basically, when you make a transaction in blockchain, many um, sites will receive that um, information. And if a thief uh, is modifying that information, basically, if one copy differs from another, that means that maybe an attack was produced. And basically, in that moment, that transaction is not longer valid. Mm -hmm. And this will uh, lead to the uh, GDPR part and protection of data, which is mu much more sensible for uh, patients and for uh, in the medical areas compared with some other areas. I think that, um, for example, exchange of uh, contracts between uh, different sites, pharmacy and uh, uh, medical insurance com medical insurance company, or some hospital and pharmacy, whatever it can be public, it's okay to use a blockchain. Also, you can use some blockchain in the in a hospital itself, but care should be taken and there is quite some discussion around the use of blockchain in medical area when you come to the sensible information related to patients, or medical diagnosis and, and rest. Mm -hmm. uh, blockchain anyhow brings a new interesting dimension in European Union in the sense that there are some countries where there are some national laws like for example Italy and I think that also Malta where some documents which are sent in the public blockchain this can be shown as a legal proof um, in the judge context. For example, if an employee uh, get a contract from an employer and this is recorded in the blockchain and uh, you can bring the blockchain uh, proof as the fact that uh, this really happened. In that context um, of the legal initiatives in the European Commission, also the use of blockchain um, for whatever it can be put there in the medical area, mm -hmm. can basically bring some legal proof, maybe in some countries now and in all the countries later, for the documents that are exchanged in the blockchain. So that's, that, uh, 
The you interesting thought, the- if, if we looked at, um, you said the legal proof, there's a lot of people doing things that don't want that legal proof that it might not benefit. Um, we'll, we'll take a break, come back, hear from our sponsor. We'll be right back. We want to unpack that a little bit. BlockFrame technology offers next-generation blockchain-managed trust and security. Unique non-fungible tokens are used to secure software bills of materials to provide data quality and security for every transaction in your supply chain. Deploy advanced peer-to-peer product security, scale zero trust capability to millions of IoT devices, allow vendor tracking and accountability, and rapidly reset from compromise. Unchangeable, time-sequenced blockchain data provides next-generation security using machine learning trust algorithms and audit analytics. Start securing your supply chain today by contacting BlockFrame at www.blockframetech.com. Welcome back to New Cyber Frontier. On today, talking with Niku, Kristen, and Yulia, and uh, about uh, security related to blockchain use of AI and blockchain in different programs for healthcare. Uh, in the EU, we talked about GDPR. Uh, Niku was talking about the, the, the use of proof for blockchain could be used as proof for uh, uh, records and the transfer and the, the existence of it. Um, a lot of times you run into, though, a large portion of the society that wants to not be on the record, wants to be able to have the right to be forgotten, which is in GDPR. Uh, how do we maintain that balance? Niku? Um, yeah, I was thinking that maybe also my colleagues want to, <laughs> to yeah, discuss want the... I was, to take uh, care of that or Yulia answer that? Go for it. Yulia? Yeah, based on the blockchain, we have the data management such that for each and every data owner who wants to enter some record in, as a raw data collection, it will be hashed, and then we have a permission grant, such that based on smart contracts that exist between hospitals, university, government, or even research institutes, they can agree upon whether it is valid. And also, we have the clinicians and researchers, such that there will be the acquisition of permissions from their side, as well as the integrity of the data needs to be verified. There is also another person who can be involved for the acquisition of the permissions, as well as to check the integrity of the data, such that based on the data retrieval, it will be done that access based on credentials and everything is stored inside the clinical data repository, which is clean. It is structured also encrypted. Mm -hmm. So you, Julia, you use um, some, or you work with social security programs, right? Or bracelets for surveillance of patients. Uh, And this is something that, that you're actually looking at implementing or is already in process. Tell me about the, where you're at right now with maybe the cyber technology. It is already in process because we did analyze each and every record for all the data, the the biophysical data of each and every patient, like blood pressure, for example, for pregnant women, or we have the pulse and um, the oxygen saturation in blood. And everything is simply collected from bracelets. Like in the iBracelet project, we did create it. So it was based on a sensor from an institute, a research institute. But also we use bracelets with like Fitbit and we access all data from there. And we store it and we analyze it based on random forests. And according to it, we have classifiers. And then we can agree upon whether a person will develop frequency and like high blood pressure or other diseases, whether it is about cardiology problems, for example, as mm-hmm. well as based on the age level seven, there is also the patient can enter a comment according to how they feel. And according to a tokenizer, we have a decision tree that is built and we see whether or not it is an emergency, if the doctor should be simply alerted as well as the caregiver. I, I, want, so, I want to add to what Diana said. Basically, for such systems, 
which are based on IoT sensors. Basically, you have a lightweighted version of blockchain, which is quite interesting in the sense that uh, you don't have the full blockchain that is used on servers. You have what is called the light version, which which means a blockchain that that tries to use few resources and still be part of the larger blockchain or something like that. So that uh, for such a system like the bracelet, you have that that version of blockchain that can be used. Interesting. So um, are we looking at this information, the collection of it uh, being, you know, how much of it's publicly available? How much of it's under the control of a, is it a private blockchain instance for the government? Where, what's the, 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 the uh, scope of the data? I, I know with GDPR being prevalent in, in the EU, uh, you have to have the right to be forgotten. It seems to, that there'd be some difficult challenges there. Can you be a little bit, Christy? Um, yeah, you're right. So uh, we, we have to have a balance in uh, what is public and uh, what's not public. Uh, and GDPR is very clear in uh, what, uh, what means privacy uh, at the level of uh, European Union. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we have to identify clearly the scenario where blockchain and uh, machine learning uh, are, are going to be used. So if the scenario is tailored in a such a way that uh, the privacy could be respected and the regulation, uh, and I'm talking about G GDPR, GDPR uh, is having an answer into the scenario then uh, then is fine so it's very important to define at the beginning the scenario of using uh, uh, blockchain in order to respect the uh, regulation and uh, here I, i'd like to um, add a few things that uh, were not mentioned uh, for, for instance in the e-health um, environment. One of the very important area is uh, the data exchange of information. And we currently have uh, in the United States, we have the direct protocol. Um, we have uh, restful exchanges of data with uh, HL7 fire. And we have in uh, European Union uh, a building block which is used. Um, uh, to exchange uh, medical records uh, among member states is called um, DSI, EHDS, EHD, uh, eHealth DSI, basically, eHealth e DSI. And the eHealth DSI is using um, a protocol called EBMS or is based on uh, EBMS. And I think in this area where the data exchange is used, uh, blockchain could provide uh, a lot of things by default. And I'm talking especially about uh, the security concerns with authentication, authorization, confidentiality, integrity, and uh, extended audit. So these uh, security concerns are, are provided by default by the technology, by by blockchain technology, and this could be uh, a very uh, big advantage. On the other hand, as you mentioned, uh, being a distributed uh, ledger uh, in, uh, in uh, blockchain is very important to decide what will be in the ledger and what will be outside of the ledger. And uh, uh, one of the researches where we are working together in this team is to have a balance uh, between uh, blockchain as a technology and the distributed file system, file system. And putting uh, these two together, we can, I think, come with an alternative uh, to the current technologies. And I'm talking uh, here especially about uh, the protocol which is promoted by Europe. Commission e-delivery, which is based on EBMS, 
and uh, the direct protocol, uh, which is also used for uh, uh, data exchanges in uh, uh, e-health area. Interesting. So those are our current projects you're looking at. I know you said you worked with uh, social security type programs or developing yeah. some new. Where where do you see that going? When's that going to be available? What's the rollout like? Uh, together with the Politechnica University of Bucharest, we have a proof of concept. Basically, a bundle of these uh, two technology, uh, blockchain and distributed file system. And uh, uh, we are uh, working to make it public available and uh, to provide an alternative to the current uh, uh, data exchange technologies uh, used in uh, e-health area. So I, I think maybe next year we can make it public available. We have a prototype currently. Interesting. Well, it's impressive. Yulia, your programs, what's, what's kind of the timeline on things moving forward and when can they be expected to be you know, publicly available? Until now, they were just validated uh, in the laboratory. So for the IRS project, we still need some funding such that we can reach a TRL such that it can be used uh, by people as well as organizations so to really create a profit. And for the project in which we involve the racer, so now we find an alternative to use the code which we already developed and based on commercialized bracelets like the Fitbit, which was tested by us to integrate it and then to create like a toolbox such that it can be used by other companies. Interesting. Sneku, so I see that there's there's a lot of connection here uh, in Romania between the university, the government, and some companies. Can you explain, you know, that that uh, dynamic, that that interaction and how that is, because it seems a little bit different than than even some of the things that uh, that we hear in the states. Uh, I wanted to add and to complete what Christy was saying, because basically um, the um, blockchain and distributed file system, which is based on a big data Hadoop uh, platform, so that Hadoop is a big data open source uh, operating system. Basically, we develop also uh, in cooperation with. Uh, a group from the University of Berkeley, US. So that is not, it will not be available only in Romania, but uh, basically it will have an international profile. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that the cooperation is based on two aspects. Basically we are, um, uh, for example, as a master, we have what is called research, which, which has 10 credits, which is about one third of the credits that a student takes um, for a semester. And basically our uh, group here is looking mostly to, to do something practical and uh, either as a uh, national level or international via the connections that we have. So that uh, part of the work that we are doing are with master or PhD students or our colleagues, we put some volunteer work on it. And for example, we have regular meet weekly meetings online also with some groups from United States where we show our results and also we do exchanges. Currently, we also open a communication line with the University of Hawaii, a professor from there. And uh, this is uh, what is called the part of our work from university from a research point of view. Once we publish and develop something, we try also to get some funding either from national or international like European Commission and so on, it's not easy. For example, uh, we put in 2019, 2020, 15 proposals for 20, and uh, which is quite a work to write 20 project proposals and we get only three or four. So mm -hmm. that is a rate of about 20% of success while previous years it was 60, 70, yeah. which, is, which is quite higher. Um, it, of course, some component like molecular dynamics is fundamental research. Well, but most of our research is towards uh, uh, technology transfer and practical so that we are trying to solve uh, common problems. And that's why maybe we are a bit different from the rest because uh, 
like in Germany and Netherlands, I think that many university goes mostly in fundamental research or something like that. Yeah. Some so who is the main benefactor of this research? Is it the government? Is it uh, Kristen's company or Yulia's or how does that work out? Uh, basically, uh, um, it's uh, mostly I think that we are looking for uh, uh, partners in the industry area in this moment or social places because some of our uh, projects were going also for uh, undeserved children in India. For example, we had also cooperation with a company from United States mm -hmm. and some projects on the uh, really, it was for schooling uh, undeserved children in India. So that is not only, um, it's really social and companies. So that industry and social where we are mostly working and where so, uh, of course, we get money from the research from government. But mostly this is our main area in this moment. Uh, governmental, I think that uh, mostly companies will uh, benefit okay. from for in this moment, like companies from Christian and so on. Yeah. But okay. I don't know what about well, this, but it's the situation, okay. Yeah. Just in kind of closing here, each one of you, anything that you'd like to get out that you need help with that our audience might hear and want to jump on with what you're doing, go ahead and make your, you know, kind of closing remarks here. Um, for me, I think that... Um, what is important is uh, it seems that it, it is a good connection between the legal aspects and blockchain. And basically, I think that uh, here uh, should come the politicians, <laughs> let's put it, uh, to have a good look of how this can be done, because there are some countries who already do it. Mm -hmm. And this will have quite some impact, both at university and industry level and in many domains. Because once this is clarified, then it will have a, quite an impact from a technological and domain perspectives. So that I think that here, uh, political part should have a good, good look and uh, this should be prom should be speed up, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. Kristen, anything from you in closing? Yes, yes. Um, from my perspective, uh, it will be very nice to get in our effort to provide alternatives to the current uh, data exchanges, IT professionals involved in uh, e-health area from Europe or uh, from the States or from anywhere. Uh, and maybe to transform what we have in an open source project that could contribute in, not necessarily in e-health, but in a lot of other areas uh, in order to provide a standardized uh, data exchange mm -hmm. decoupled uh, that will reuse the infrastructure components that are currently available, as those uh, mentioned, but with, uh, let's say, with a bit of focus at the beginning on uh, e-health area. Also, in, uh, in regards of uh, machine learning, I didn't mention, but uh, this is, uh, let's mm. say, one of our tracks to, to improve a current, uh, to, to, to improve an already existing uh, project or application is about anomaly detection in uh, laboratory area. Uh, and this is also, uh, let's say, an area of interest uh, in the near future. So if uh, the audience is interested in these two areas, would like very much to work together. All right, Yulia? I believe that the blockchain technology will be more and more incorporated in a decentralized healthcare data management system, such that uh, we will have uh, on-chain events, all these transactions which are simply recorded on the blockchain ledger, as well as off-chain um, events, because there are some cases when the records are too large and we need to store them in a cloud or on a storage system. All right. Well, thanks again. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and uh, it's interesting to hear what you all have going on uh, in different think areas of the world that we don't often get uh, a time to, 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 to communicate with. 
Thanks a lot. You heard it today on New Cyber Frontier. Pieces. If you have an idea, if you have a question that you would like to hear answered, or if you want to get involved with our efforts, reach out to us at newcyberfrontier.com. We also encourage you to visit our sponsors' links as they are the ones that really make this show possible. I want to thank each of you for supporting the show, and we look forward to seeing you back for the next episode of New Cyber Frontier.